I will close it later. I will give the least amount of time to myself uh, because I also act as a moderator and if anyone requests translator on modern monetary theory. So uh, let me introduce the first speaker. Yeah, Pak Jamester Simarmata is a Batak. For those of you who hasn't known, Batak is a very prominent ethnic group in Indonesia. It's a very vocal and loud uh, minority. Uh, lots of people, lots of the ethnic members, ethnic group members are in finance, in economics, and generally uh, they are very uh, sharp, sharp. Yeah, they have sharp opinion, and they don't, they are not shy in voicing this opinion. So Pasi Marmata recently uh, answered the challenge of a minister in Indonesia about foreign debt, if I'm not mistaken, and they had a, an hour meeting. And uh, the minister said that uh, Pasi Marmata has provided him with a with a vista, with a with a learning experience for him. Yeah, although not enough to change the policy. Yeah, Pasi Marmata, <laughs> Pak James. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, I think uh, perhaps Pak James also can introduce himself later. Uh, I only know Pak James through his work online, uh, social media. And uh, I know that he uh, he's teaching at the University of Indonesia, and he has lots of uh, he has some books, yeah, on Indonesian economics, on global economics, and at the moment he's focusing on money, especially from sovereign or positive money perspective. So perhaps uh, without further ado, so that uh, the noise also will be reduced, I will mute my microphone. Pak James, you can you can start your presentation, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So, okay. I will be first to talk about money and the economy. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. So, yeah, udah. Ha. Okay. Ha. Makasih, ya, Ibu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pati, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is just a history. I make a reference to Stephen Charling. Eh? I think I have got a lot from him. So he has uh, made something like uh, the lost science of money. So I think we should see them. So I think this is just an introduction. I don't read it just to, to say how is the development of the economy from since 30,000 years before Christ, and then it until the agricultural commodities in a way, something like that, which has been the primitive money system. So it is very interesting to know what is really the origin of interest in the economy. 
So yeah, it started from the, the loan in seed grains. Why seed grains? Because grains, it will be self uh, production. It will be, it will be something like reproduction. So really, the origin of interest is from uh, farming grain. When it is implanted, it will be uh, reproducing, and then from one grain you can have hundred grains. So this is really, really uh, you can get the interest from that. So now it has been people. I don't know. I, I think mostly what is really the the origin of applying now interest rate in money. So when it is loan, it is the power that has the power of production and it is interest rate that has been taken from that. So like I have said just now, from one grain you get hundred new grains and then you I don't know what is the 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 the, the, the grain the, the interest that has been determined. But there was a change in that. If it is from reproduction, so from uh, reproducing reproducing material, then in Babylonia it has been used to inorganic, inorganic material. So it is it has been as it were living organism. So this is really the problem. There has been a change in that from living organism to uh, immaterial, uh, inorganic uh, material. So in the time in in Mesopotamia, there was agriculture debt forgiveness. Now we hear, for example, a jubilee. Yeah, in 2000, in, in 1999, when I was in Washington, attending the uh, uh, the seminar with the the head of IMF, because Indonesia was just in 1998 had a, a severe crisis in monetary in financial crisis so i was invited to to come there and then we have been talking and then had been debated first michael kemisu because it has been a very indonesian people suffer for much so at the time we see in washington there's a, a demonstration of the developing countries who had the debt so now, let's go start barter, really. It's the starting of exchange of production. It is really an enabler to division of labor. So barter is a means of product exchange, original enabler in specialization. So if you see, for example, Adam Smith has been saying the origin of the, the world, the, the people wealth, the country's wealth, is division of labor. Yes, it has been started, really, by the people practicing the barter. So this is really that has been uh, in, uh, started by the primitive exchange, this barter. So now specialization, specialization it has been uh, able to increase the productivity. Yeah, before, what is the inconvenience of this barter? The so-called double coincidence of wants. You very difficult for you to know the price of the other uh, product you like to change. And then they, they he doesn't he doesn't know he didn't know also what is the, the price of your, your product. So there is double coincidence of wants is something like uh, uh, how to, to get the right price. It's quite a, a difficult pro process. So then money innovation has has been revol revolutionized trade, either in a country or it is along uh, uh, for all the, all the, the world. Yeah. So. Money has been firstly as a commodity. There is commodity, for example, there were cow, grain, silver, tobacco, gold, silver, bronze. And in principle, commodity money has intrinsic value equitable to the, its nominal value. Like for example, when we had previously money from gold, usually it is considered the gold content is equal to the to the to the face value of that money so also silver but this is also when we see later the so-called fiat money fiat money really is a money where nominal value is higher than intrinsic values 
it has been used by many kingdom. Let's see, for example, in uh, Greek, uh, like Kyrgyz and Sparta, money was made of uh, uh, yeah, made of iron. And then in Roman Empire, Numa used from bronze. In China, Dynasty Song is from leather. And all these three kingdoms were prosperous. The prosperity is one is from uh, the so-called seigneuries. It is the, the difference between the face value and the, 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 the intrinsic value. So you see there, the source of income of the state is from these seigneuries. I think this is the has been, we, we, we are now, I think, also fi fighting to get this, to, 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 re, 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 to, to rebuild this system again. So that the 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 the, the seigneuries should be should belong to to the state. So in modern time, the so-called paper fiat money dominates the world. Now, modern fiat money made of paper, and then in the form of digital money. So we now we now have paper money, and we have also this is digital money. You have in your card something like that. So, so this is the two kinds of money. If there are two kinds of money circulate at the same time, there's some law applies. So it means bad money drives out good money. It has been uh, said by many things. So money for the first, the first system is the first coin created by King Crusius in, in Libya, first to develop a monetary system with different denomination related to each other. So this is the first kind formal coin money. The money is made of different metals. So, electrum, the so called alloy of silver and gold. But there were also old China currency system. So, really, people now usually said when we are talking about money, it is only uh, as uh, an invention of the European. But in fact, really, it has been invented in China. In China, also, it has been before. So, popular fiat money originated in US. Uh, uh, the state now we know, and it was according to Galbraith. Yeah, Bank of England print paper money to replace taxes. You see that again, the role of money has been related to taxes. So in English, in England, so in British country at the time, Bank of England has been print, printing money to replace taxes because there is no representation, uh, taxation without representation. It is very popular in the American uh, countries. So now we come to the function of money. There are three functions. We know it as a means of exchange. So as a unit of account, this is very clear. And then as a store of value. So you see here, function number one, as a means of exchange, really is a substitute for barter. So supporting trade and economic growth and employment creation. So again, we see here, we see money always has to be to related to the... So now, for example, yeah, we see central bank like in Indonesia, they don't care about uh, employment creation. They said that we are only in charge of maintaining stability. I don't think it is a good idea. So function number three could be contradictive to number one because it could be a means of uh, investment. This is contradictive when the situation in crisis, for example, money that has been bound in investment cannot be used. So there would be a, a, a lacking in money, a scarce in money, it could be hampered trade. So it has been not conducive to trade. Now you see, for example, from here, number two as a unit of account is very clear. So what you have see here, very important here we discuss uh, really in reality is about uh, money as a means of exchange and a store of value. So I have said just now, uh, between means of exchange and store of value, there is a contradiction. So this is now we, later when we are talking about uh, state money or sovereign money, it should be the, uh, separated between as a means of exchange and a store of value. So now in the latest time, Return on investment on financial sector generally higher than return on, on real sector. 
this is the very disturbing pro problem. We see here there is a, an attractive people attracted to invest in finance finance sector, not to real sector, but in reality the real sector is the source of income, the source where you can create employment. It is not uh, supporting the, the welfare of the people. In the United States, it's very well, uh, well, uh, well uh, very popular the 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 the, the the terms fire fire is something like finance insurance real estate so this is said to be a non-productive investment in here if you if you build house from the start yes it is productive but if you just uh, buy the existing house it is not productive anymore so now we go to the bank system and money creation the two tire bank system in a country, in any country, central bank at the apex of the of the system, and the, the commercial bank in the second layer. The central bank creates reserve money, and they determine the the reserve ratio. In Indonesia, it is short, uh zero wajib minimum (GWM). Now, the bank uh, commercial bank create a scriptural money. So you see here, there is a two kind money reserve money created by the central bank and then scriptural money created by the uh, commercial bank. Now, commercial bank could be operating as here. This is the very division, the theory of banking. Pure intermediary institution. You read in textbook, all books write that all bank as an intermediary institution. They can, if you follow this, the principle of pure intermediary institution, the bank cannot lend money if the bank does not have cash in its form. No money creation in pure intermediary institution. The second kind of uh, a bank is reserve ratio principle. Commercial bank have to keep the reserve ratio and the whole cash it is their, its own. There is a creation, the money creation here, but it is in the network of banking. You can see it very clearly if you open the books of Samuelson. Samuelson, Paul Samuelson from MIT. He, he, he give a very clear explanation for this, but now it has not been practiced. So really now that has been largely practiced is money, money creation principle. Individual bank can create money. So it is not only in a network of bank like the reserve ratio principle, but even individually, a bank can create money and then lend money uh, to the people. This bank create money out of nothing. So it is not, there is no in store, there is no in involved. So the three principle of uh, a banking system very well explained by Richard Werner. As I have mentioned just now, before, bank and money. Based on the latest data, most of the money in circulation is created by commercial banks. The statistic from England, it is 90-70% of the money in, uh, in circulation is created by the commercial bank. So what is created by the central bank? Uh, an organ uh, of the, the government. It's only 3%. So really, if in the old time, bank take the government, take the, the senior rates from printing money, now it's only for 3%. The money that has been that, that, uh, printed by central bank, created by the central bank, so it is very small. What is the rest? It has been enjoyed by the private bank. So Bank Indonesia, according to the RR that has been promulgated, uh, it is only the same percentage, I think, near the percentage of uh, the Bank of England. They never published the percentage of this. So one of the surprising facts is that many people do not know the reality. No, I have this in my experience. When I write in my uh, WhatsApp account about this, that uh, private banking, uh, commercial banking, create money, they don't believe me. They said it's the government. No, I explain, but but it's very difficult. So this is the problem now. It is something like the 
जो पानी गैलीलियो जो पानी वन ही सेड द वर्ल्ड इज फ्लैट नॉट फ्लैट बट राउंड ना ही इवन एक्सकम्युनिकेटेड बाय द पॉप एट द टाइम ओके सो सेइंग दैट कमर्शियल बैंक आर इंटरमीडियरी इज कॉन्ट्रडिक्टिव विद द रिजर्व रेशियो सो नाउ इन इंडोनेशिया फॉर एग्जांपल द लॉ सेड दैट द बैंक इज बेस्ड ऑन दिस इंटरमीडियर प्रिंसिपल बट it has this reserve ratio it's contradictive so that and the our the power uh, people uh, member of uh, the parliament they don't understand this many people don't understand even many of the people in the bank indonesia in our central bank don't understand seniorities when i was when presenting my uh, document in one seminar and the uh, the people who by the, the 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 discussion is from bank indonesia he asked what is senior rates i just i just laughed at the time why he didn't understand why he is in the central bank but he didn't know that yeah something like that happened many things in, in our society so money creation and then senior rates money creation commodity money so in commodity money face value is the same to intrinsic value if products and cost is insignificant but in the commodity fiat money simplified senior rate is equal to face value minus production cost so as i have just uh, before like kolkos and greek and numa and so like these are enjoying really the senior rates from even the they made commodity fiat, fiat money so even though it is made of uh, material if it is if the value of uh, nominal value is greater than the intrinsic value it is said also fiat money so paper fiat money production cost is insignificant but now almost zero in digital currency so in general in, gen in general this is seniorage so maurice alle it is an econom from economist from france who got the nobel uh, laureate in 1988 He is very strong in argumenting that fiat money with senators it is an earned income. So it it belongs to the state. It cannot let it to 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 private. It should be taken as taxes, or it should be the, the right of the people to have that. This I think that should be uh, maintained in the present system. So now about money quantity and the volume of trade. What gives paper money value? Lesson learned, yeah. Benjamin Franklin. It is not because of the legal tender laws or the fixed exchange rate. It means at the time, if you have ten dollar uh, uh, fiat money, you can exchange them to gold. So it is not because of that. So he said, it is the quantity of paper money relative to volume of trade it serves. So it is the, that make money value maintain that there is value of money. Excess of paper money relative to volume of trade will uh, cause it lose value. In the United States at the time before they were uh, independent, they were still the colony of British. In Philadelphia, for example, in uh, yeah, and Pennsylvania, it is very stable and the economy uh, prosper and then you see for example the other two countries new england and south carolina no they have inflation it is because they have created money more than necessity by the trade so this had been so it should be also our uh, lesson from the experience that has been uh, experienced in uh, uh, this uh states the pennsylvania which who was i think at the time uh, benjamin franklin is the governor so function of money is to replace barter yes we have talked about it before now gold smith bank and the safe ratio see this is very interesting so metal money or gold is very cumbersome to bring for example if you like to bring 20000 money it will it will be uh It has a weight six uh, 
168 uh, kilogram. It's very cumbersome. You cannot get it. So what has been done? People who has the coin, they can deposit it. Deposit, uh, they could deposit the money in the goldsmith. So it is only uh, given the receipt and they could use that receipt as money. You can use it in the market and then you have that, you, as you have uh, the, the, uh, the gold. And if the, the bearer of that receipt can exchange that receipt to the money as it is written in that. It is the, the, the expression. Now, at the time, the goldsmiths were very smart. They see that no, not every holder of receipt come, came to exchange receipt for the money. So he, usually he made it, the receipt he, given, he, he gave is 10 times of the value of deposit, 10 times of the, the, the gold he has. So this is really the original concept of reserve ratio in the bank, central bank. But it's concept, it's not practice anymore. Not, not purely, but it has been announced something like that. In very simple way, is the basis of the RR used by central bank for commercial bank. This is the, from this Goldsmith system, it has been used, the reserve ratio now used by the central bank. It has been announced everywhere, it has been announced, but it is not a practice. As I have, uh, we have said just now, it is the money creation principle that has been in operation now. So, uh, yeah. Now, what is the, we see what happened in the world, yeah? The foreign exchange and global trade. So now, according to the global turnover of uh, foreign exchange, 6.6 6 trillion per day in April 2019. While the global merchandise trade in 2018 is 19.67 trillion. What is that? Why is the global foreign exchange is much, much more than the real trade? Taking 250 days of working days, the yearly foreign exchange is 1.6, uh, uh, 1, 1 trillion, 1, 1, oh, yeah, 1. 6, 6, uh, 650 trillion. So, Per dollar trade, it has $250 for an exchange. What is it? It's speculation. So we see money has been a, a field of speculation, very, very speculated. This is an economy. So without employment creation of tax, it's detrimental, really. So finance has been acting quasi independent from the real sector economy. The contributor to the unemployment absorption. So no contribution to economy. So public pri private sector in the economy. The economy consists of two big sectors, the public sector and private sector. The public sector, you should know that, like Department of Public Works or something like that. There are two special sectors, fiscal and monetary. So fiscal really taking taxes from the, from the people and then it will be used to, uh, to build the public goods, the public infrastructure. While monetary is create money as a means of exchange, but it also to be used as a source of income from them really. It should be to the state that has been uh, said by uh, Maurice Alley. It is a uh, non-earned and non-earned income. It should belong to the people. It should belong to the states. So money has a public services function. So now if we see, for example, that, uh, that money is created by the, by the uh, private uh, commercial bank. It, is, it has not been wrong because money should be considered a public service and should belong to the states. So there should be mutual adjustment between the, the two sectors, uh, public, uh, uh, fiscal, and monetary. Sometimes monetary could replace fiscal, sometimes fiscal replace monetary. Oh, fiscal monetary taxes, yeah, as an as a instrument to recover public sector expenditure. No. Other function of taxes is to correct the economic distortion so that the economy runs optimally. One of the very important things in that 
get rid of rent economy. Money in principle is to replace barter, spreading specialization to raise productivity. Money fiat creation entail revenue generates re without rendering service or product. You see, for example, when they create money, no employment creation, no service creation. So it is just, yeah, it's because money created out of nothing. So it creates, it, it contributes nothing to the economy. So in that case, the income, the difference between the nominal value and the intrinsic value, it's, it is a rent income. It should belong to the state. So fiscal monetary complementary substitute, in this case, there is sometimes, uh, as I have said just now, it could be fiscal replace monetary, and then at the other time, it could be monetary who replace uh, taxes. Banks, vital player in the economy, but neglected. What is neglected, it means? Because it is the main allocator of uh, credit, not included in the macroeconomy. I have tried to open many microeconomic books. It is not mentioned banks. So in macroeconomic formation, you see, for example, why is consumption plus I plus uh, investment plus government expenditure plus export minus uh, uh, minus uh, import. In C and I investment, very big role of bank. So it is the constitution of national income. But why is banking not, con not discussed in macroeconomic? It is a questionable uh, problem. Why? Is, is, is there anything that has been uh, hidden from the bank so that it is not uh, disciplinary? I am still curious about this. Say, for example, the economy of Indonesia. The money handled by central bank. In order to have a monetary, we have to see this. Why the central bank is so uh, independent, has a very high position in the state. He's not under the president, but he manages most of the money that circulate in a country. So it is not fair. It's not just. So financialization of the economy. This is the, our the, uh, the uh, latest development that very, very, very sad yeah, for the economy. Latest development, financial sector, return on investment greater than the real sector. So, so more funds going to finance. Financial sector oriented because they can gain profit in very short time. See, for example, the so-called high frequency trading. It can get money there, zero in micro sense. How do you see that? What is the meaning of investment in that field? Microsecond, you get the money, it's not conceivable. So, this is the so financialism of the economy, due to its more attractive period of investment, many corporations build its financial unit to end its financial market. See, for example, like stock market. Big corporations like GE and GM, they have such units. It is not to, to engage, to, to, to deal with their internal monetary problem. No, they are engaging in the, in the financial market. And their profit for that is sometimes very big, could be significant. 
So you know, that's why that big corporation has been creating this financial unit, even though really like GE, General Electric, General Motors, their business is very different from uh, financial uh, sector. So most stocks are from existing firm, not uh, IPO. There are some prices rise due to bank credit. The bank from credit given all always. See, for example, now in the stock market, the index is very rise rise. The economy is zero point five percent, but they are raising the ten percent, five percent. Where come that money from? So, being commercial bank, they they are profit oriented, not people welfare oriented, and investing in short term perspective. In order to have the economy, you have, you have to invest long term, not short term, long term. You need, for example, you you raise a paddy at least four months, but they could have profit in in a day and you, like in the high frequency trading in microseconds. So this is a distortion of the economy, a distortion behind financial sector is banking. <laughs> so loan guarantee and profit motive. Being profit oriented, commercial bank put high priority on profit, but loan guaranteed by collateral. What is the problem here? This is relationship banking prefer old known customer. For loan guarantee, high value collateral. It means High value collateral, only the, the rich could have the, uh, the value collateral sufficient. I have, my, I have once uh, go with uh, uh, my, my friend to the bank. They have demanded the collateral value three times the value of the credit. Very big. So it is only, it, you couldn't fool the small and medium enterprise. Small and medium enterprise is the absorber more most of the labor force. So this banking system has been distortive to the economy. Relationship banking quite allergic to innovation because no previous record. So the bank, they consider previous record to be important. So if there is someone come to, 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 to propose a project and innovation, it will be rejected because no record from them. So because of that, they have to find another source of funding. It has been uh, proposed by some Peter. Yeah. Loan guarantee allocation of credit tend to go to the big or success corporation, hurting small and medium enterprise and jobs creation. Bank within conglomeration. You see, in Indonesia, there are many banks who are within a conglomeration, preferring their inner group, hurting equitable enterprising. So this is a distortion many think has been coming from this uh, banking system. So financing development in developing countries. Many developing countries are dependent on foreign debt, neglecting domestic bank source. This is due to the theory development economics, proposing in things. On from friends highly advised by the World Bank and, and even the WTO, making them highly indebted. This should be a new development paradigm. I propose this to be a new, new uh, development paradigm. So credit productive and non-productive. This, as I said before, banks are the center of credit allocation. How bank allocate credit? Credit for real sector. Credit for non-productive sector, for example, for the so-called fire, 
quit up for speculation, real estate, and other financial products are the uh, objective of making an economy to serve the, the people welfare. So private, uh, private bank tend to high profit activities, hence financial sector, which has also short termism. Yeah, terminism, so short termism. This is very contract contradictive to the to the to the to the objective of building an economy. With an almost independent financial sector from the real sector. Financial sector where source and think company. This is the virtual world. So say for example, the Bend Report in, in 2019, it was predicted 900 trillion financial wealth. Vis-a-vis -vis the global GDP is only 19 trillion. Where is the support of this financial wealth? Again, but it could be. So this is out of the commercial bank marketing without effective control of the central bank. Awarding credit to fast profit making activities without any from the from the real sector, without support from the real sector, is the only way to enable this, that things happen. The collateral could be the financial asset too. Vicious cycle. From the other side. There is a lot of real sector projects which are dying of lack of bank credit. You know that. We know that all. This is the problem that we are facing in the in the in, the, in our present uh, banking system. Now, what is the proposal? The proposal is the foreign money system. Present bank failure or the bank scenarios capture is an earned income, vital cause. Misallocation of credit, short termism. Lack of preference for long term social welfare, like environmental issues, frequent crisis due to bank credit mismanagement, and so on. So, the proposal for that is to replace this present system. So, frame many system created by the state. Commercial bank will operate with a full reserve system, a pure intermediary principle. They will, as it written in the book, as written in the law, bank is. I mean, intermediary, uh, intermediary uh, yeah, institution. Let's make it really like that. Not like now, it is said as an uh, intermediary pre, uh, system, but in reality, they create money out of nothing. Said money will remedy the present bank failure and produce more equitable economy and more common goods, job env jobs, environment, climate change. Revival and resurgence. Yeah, now we are coming to almost uh, near the end of my presentation due to the uh, COVID-19. The economy has all, almost crippled, both from the supply and, and demand side. This and second wave of COVID-19 in Spain and other European countries has triggered new concern. We are afraid the economic perspective is now closely related to, uh, to the COVID-19 proceeds. It vaccine discovery. So it will be closely related to that. In these uncertainties from the supply and demand side, fiscal is almost quasi dead. Hence, the only thing that can be proposed is the monetary instrument. It has been proposed by Stiglitz also. So I think we don't have any, if there is a small part of the economy now in operation, it's only small part. They cannot get the Many people couldn't get their, their, their previous employment. We are we are afraid about that. In the meantime, there should be a special economy restructuring adjustment for the whole economy. The work from home new situation. So, what is the proposal for that production system specialists? Uh, they have to convene to find out which system can be used in the work from home situation now in. New production method of all kind has to be discovered to enable people finding workplace. All this must be financed by money creation. Before we can find that system, all that must be financed by money creation. It could be done if the money creation is nationalized. But in many, in any money creation must be related to the real product service to avoid inflationary effect. Due to recent advancement in the conference technology, national brainstorming 
could be made to find any alternative to the proposed one. I think I have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you all. Danke Ihnen. Auf Wiedersehen. Danke, Pak James. Yeah. Uh, I think we have had a very productive uh, 45 minutes <laughs> or even, yeah, I think 45 minutes. Without further ado, uh, Christian, you can start your presentation. Perhaps uh, James can uh, stop his screen sharing. Yeah, you are, you are the host. You, you, you manage. Okay. Uh, you, you, okay. Okay. Great. So, Christian, you can start. Please unmute your uh, sound, Christian, so we can hear you. Your sound is still mute. I can see on the screen, so please press unmute. Christian. So, Sorry. Christian. Okay. Um, you see the slides? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Christian Gallery and I'm from Germany in Bavaria and uh, I'm doing two things. Uh, I'm, I have invented one complementary currency. It's, uh, it's called the Chiemgauer. It's a small currency in, in Bavaria, in the southeast of Bavaria, near Munich. And uh, another uh, profession of mine is in a research. And I'm, I'm doing a, a four-year project uh, in, in the topic democratizing money and credit. It's a university book, and that's uh, a very interesting uh, topic me, and I can uh, relate the practical uh, field and the theory work. And uh, I want to tell you a, a little bit of my research. And um, yes, the first thing is, um, let's start. The first thing is uh, with the phenomen phenomenon of currencies worldwide. We have uh, we have all the national currencies, and we 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 have uh, more than I think ten thousand complementary currencies in the world, and uh, some of them you can see, um, but most of them um, they are nearly invi uh, invisible for you. And they are in regions or they are in certain sectors, and uh, it's very interesting what they, what their functions are, and um, yeah, what their what their goals, what their goals are. And um, uh, I, I have some examples here, and you can see um, an example from Japan. Uh, it's a social currency with uh, in the unit of hours. And uh, it's uh, it's a Furia Kipo Huria Kipo system, and it's uh, for senior people, uh, and and for people who want to care for senior people, and you have other currencies like the Banca Palmas. That's a green one with the palm palm in the middle. It's in Brazil, and they want to support the the um, a poor a poor suburb. Of, of a town and have to work uh, all over Brazil with 50 or 70 different low currencies and they work close, closely together with the uh, uh, state and uh, that's also a very interesting example and uh, Bristol pound you have uh, the Swiss uh, via in Switzerland and uh, many more. You also have the cryptocurrency world with the, uh, with the uh, Bitcoin, of course, and Ethereum and all the other kinds. But there are also uh, cryptocurrency 
zur Cryptocurrency und blocken operations like in Kenya. We had it in the chat before that um, so there is uh, one initiative, the Economic Foundation in in Kenya with uh, Bill Ruddick, and he, he's working on on the possibility to support poor people with uh, with a local currency, which is based on a on a cryptocurrency. And um, though you have many more examples uh, in the world, and the question is how how can we differ between good ones and bad ones, or how can we differ uh, what what are the right right schemes for your problems uh, which you have in in your region or in your country and um, that's one he is one of the guys who research about complementary currencies he's the president of the research association of uh, uh, of of the complementary currencies um, and and he, he has a tri triangle and says okay there's the national currencies we have uh, competing currencies with uh, with com competition all over the world like bitcoin or amazon coins or paypal and so on and we have uh, complementary currencies who wants to support um, social needs or communities i think that's one differentiation you can make and and i try to uh, to adapt the uh, money that was created by beck and garrett uh, from the international monetary fund and and i tried to adapt it for for my perspective on money and you have uh, three dimensions which are quite the same it's a peer to peer it's uh, uh, it's tax acceptance I, I call it tax acceptance instead of public and uh, the third one is universally accessible and and uh, I replaced one that w was uh, called before di digital and I replaced it with the aspect of profit or not for profit. And, and that's the criteria and you can say yes or no. Is it peer to peer? Yes or no? Is it, uh, is it accepted by the state? Yes or no? Is it for profit? Yes or no? Or is it universal, universal accessible? And and then you can you have some combinations and and see of course uh, the cash money like the dollars and the rupees and the and the euros that's uh, that's cash and what is it uh, it's a peer to peer currency because you don't need any uh, central uh, central institutions it to uh, uh, to some of you and then the transaction is done that's the difference to the to bank money i need the bank to to organize the transaction uh, the cash cash money is um, is you can say not for profit because it is issued by the state and the state is doing uh, not for not for profit purposes and it is universally accessible so everybody can accept the cash currency but it's interesting uh, it depends if you can pay taxes with cash in in germany we can't pay taxes with uh, cash money so i uh, uh, i have it in the not in the tax acceptance but there are countries of course where you have uh, acceptance with cash money so you would uh, transfer the cash into the tax acceptance and and then you have um, what we have heard before so you have um, the central bank currency or you have the the banks and i defer between private banks and cooperative banks and uh, um, state banks because the state banks and cooperative banks are are working uh, for for the community or for the state and so they are not really for for maximizing profits 
but uh, there are also the private banks and uh, when you look at the United States more than 95% is private so are private banks and they are maximizing their profits and so you have to defer when you look at banks um, what it, what is their purpose and is it for the community or not and that's the same with uh, uh, complementary currencies um, uh, with the uh, Kimgao it's a uh, it's a non-profit organization and it's a cooperative and it is uh, designed for the community and it's not for profit. That's a, that's a, no goal at all. And uh, when you look at uh, many cryptocurrencies, um, they are designed for profit. So the issue of the currency wants to, to maximize its profit or to create, create some uh, some profit of, uh, out of the issuing of the money. And, um, and then you have a look into, or we have the commodity money, that's gold. That's also peer to peer, but it's not accepted for taxes and not, it's not, uh, it's not universally acceptable because you can pay with it in, in the shop. So you have many different forms. And that's um, one one kind of uh, type type uh, of a typology. And uh, now I came to one uh, come to one example. It's the Kimgao itself. Um, what I've, uh, we found it in uh, 2002, and uh, in 2005 we had we had a, a process. Uh, Vision, vision process, some sentences, and and said, okay, that's our vision. And uh, one is uh, we want to sustainably strengthen the common good and the regional economy, thereby securing our jobs and public infrastructure and making us less dependent on external influences. So that's one one statement, one goal, and. Um, now the, the, the function, we work together in a self-determined manner to ensure the smooth flow of money in the region. So that's a means of payment to bundle investment capital and make funds available for regional project and companies. That's a saving function of money and to support regional charitable, charitable tasks. Um, and that's the function of gifts or financing and uh, in order to raise awareness of the importance and the significance of regional economic activity in the region. And uh, the Kimgao can serve as a driving force for overall regional development in the Kimgao and as a model for other projects on a supra-regional level. So that's, that is a mission statement or the vision of the Kimgao. And uh, of course, we have to check every year if if we have um, if we reached some of the goals or a little of the goals or if we don't reach anything of it, and um, now to the rules of the Kimgao, what is it? So we, here you can see the cash form of the Kimgao. We also have a digital form, the uh, a card system and also a transaction system, a digital, and the value always is one euro, is one Kimgao. And um, we have in the in our rules that we can change this uh, value, so it's not uh, fixed forever, but it's easier for businesses to to stick a, a unit of account to the national currency. And when you see it's a successful complementary currencies, most of them are stick to the national currency. Um, the exchange is one euro for one Kimgao and uh, the reserve is, is 100% in euro. And we work together with an eth ethical bank um, and, and they have the reserve and they can lend them the euro reserve to other companies. And in the meantime, we work with the Kimgao within the community. Um, the Kimgawa can be re-exchanged from Kimgawa into Euro and that the costs are 5% and uh, that's, that's 
for many businesses, it's quite expensive and many or most of them um, don't want to exchange the local currency into the euro. And they are looking for possibilities to, to spend the Kimgao again. The exchange fee is, uh, is inclusive uh, value added tax and all, all the turnovers and all the fees are, are taxed by the state. So it's not a black market, it's a white market and uh, we are very transparent. And uh, one, one uh, at disadvantage uh, is um, that we, that the businesses can only pay their taxes in euro and that's always a problem for complementary currencies. And uh, from the 5% from the exchange from Kimgo into Euro, 60% uh, of, of this uh, income goes to non-profit organizations. So 3% and uh, the, this is chosen by the, by the citizens who change the Euro into Kimgo. They, they have uh, no personal bonus, but they can choose which organization get, um, gets a charity of 3%. And um, then another aspect of the Kimgo is that it is uh, a money which, is, which has a negative interest rate and which grows old. So it makes no sense to, to hoard the money or to speculate with the Kimgo. And I think that's, um, that's not very often with complement, complementary currencies, but in, in our case, we tried to implement this idea. And there are many uh, or some economists like Kenneth Rogoff from Harvard University who, who, who says, okay, that's the right rule. We need, uh, we would need 6% negative interest rate for the national currencies. And uh, today we have um, a maximum of, uh, of 0.75%, but uh, I, I, there are no currencies in the world with 6%. So we, we have here a single, uh, a single rule. And, uh, but we, what we see in our experience that is, that is working very well and uh, people accept it when they are used to it. And it, um, they, they need about uh, one or two weeks and then they are getting used to this, to this kind of rule. And then they see that it is uh, a good rule for the community because nobody um, hoards too much money and everybody who has uh, something to, to offer um, has not to wait too long that somebody come to to spend their kim or for performance of the uh, participants and i think that's uh, that's a big problem in, in what we see in the most of of the money is speculative and we had the presentation before that uh, more than 99 percent in the world is speculative and in the Kimgawa world, we have uh, zero percent speculative and one hundred percent real, real money which circulates in the real economy. Um, now we come to the to the Kimgawa circuit or cy business cycle. Uh, when you are a citizen, you you can uh, go to a business, and um, there are two possibilities. So. The first one is you change your euro into Kimgauer before and cash Kimgauer. But the other possibility is you take your read, read your card and go to the business and, and you pay your, your amount uh, with the card. And then the business get, gets the 100 Kimgauer and he tries, he tries to spend the Kimgauer again in the business cycle. And um, when you look at the business cycle, it's in average, it's about four times uh, when it's uh, circulate when it is in circulation, and after four after four uh, circulations, uh, it will be changed back from Kimgo into Euro. That's the average. It can be that uh, that one Kimgo circulates ten times or twenty times or thirty times, but it also can be that a business gets 
gets 100 Kimgo and change it immediately back into Euro. So I, I only talk about an average um, number. And uh, so it's in circulation, then it's uh, when it is changed back, then 5% uh, goes to the Commons. A Commons is uh, um, a non-profit organization, which gets uh, 3%. And uh, Kimgao itself is also a commons organization, so a non-profit organization, which uh, spends again the, the fees for the operating of, of the business. So every employee of the Kimgao is paid in Kimgao, not in Euro. And, and that's one person who uh, is doing the Kimgao in practice. She's a business woman. And she uh, she earns about uh, one hundred thousand Kimgauer per year, and she she spends all of her Kimgauer into a, the business cycle again. So the, she she buys ele uh, uh, ecologic electricity with the Kimgauer. She she buy she pays her suppliers. Um, she's she has an organic food store, and she has some some suppliers who accept Kimgawa and she also spends uh, Kimgawa for her private needs for her family when, when the family needs clothes or or she has to buy some um, drugs then she also spends Kimgawa again shows um, and many of, of our business uh, men and women um, are spending their Kimgawa completely so about 80 to 85 percent of our business members spend all of their Kimgauer income again. Um, some theoretical aspects. Um, uh, I have taken, I have, I have taken uh, um, a old, a old view of the virtues, the seven virtues, and and tried to to assign some theories to it. And when you see uh, at very old theories from Plato, Plato or uh, some new from Margaret Kennedy. Uh, it is about uh, balancing uh, global and regional development by a dual currency system. And it's uh, very fascinating that um, the idea is very old. So you can read uh, in, the, in the writings of Plato uh, when he dreamed of a, of a currency in Greece, um, uh, to to have both to have it balanced and he also said when you when you build a city you you don't uh, should uh, should build it on the on the on the sea uh, you should you should have um, have a distance of about 5 or 10 kilometers to the sea so it's it's more difficult to trade and and then you have a, a, a currency within the community and for the external currency he, he suggested a currency based on silver or, or, or gold and uh, it's quite interesting and i think it's uh, also very modern today his thinking and uh, there's also the tradition that interest is not good and uh, and uh, you should um, Look for solutions to to prevent uh, to prevent uh, rents on money, and that's the tradition of uh, Aristotle and also uh, Silvio Gesell and so John many uh, um, talked about it, and uh, we have theories of Rudolf Steiner uh, about uh, giving money or. Uh, to increase the gift money, and that's also implemented in the Kingawa currency design, to, to have as much uh, gift money as possible for the nonprofits. And uh, there are other interesting um, theories by Nico Pech, it's a German one, he's uh, talking about a post-growth society. And uh, he says, okay, in a post-growth society, the region is more important than ever. And uh, the regionalization of production would e decrease the number of value chains. And that would be an advantage for, for the ecology because you need less resources and you have more work 
into the production. And um, another aspect is uh, by John Dewey, it's uh, action-oriented uh, pedagogics and, um, and to see the democracy as a play field for, for institutional experiments. And to say, okay, when we, when we develop something, let's try it on a small scale level and then develop it. That's the same, would be the same for full, full money approach or other approaches. And we have the smallest beautiful approach by uh, Leopold Kohr and, and, and Schumacher and Eleanor Ostrom. And um, I think also a very important aspect, the aspect of the commons. So not to have only private property or state property, more to have property in between. And um, the last, last thing is always the courage to do something, not to talk about, only talk about it. And that's a uh, yeah, great, great woman and man like uh, Martin Luther King or John Lennon and, and, and many, many more. And uh, one aspect uh, is also what kind of money do we want in the future? Do we want a future from a, from a hierarchical aspect? So uh, that you have an organization like the Libra Foundation and they uh, say, okay, we issue, we issue the money and then we say, okay, these are the resellers and and these are the customers, but we decide about the rules of money. Or do we want a future of money where we all uh, can, can decide in a democratic way about our currencies? And I think that's a very important aspect um, to think more about it and to, to think about not only states, that's also very important to have states who issue the currency, but also collectives or comments who issue currencies. Uh, and I think we have to find a, a good way in between. As a flower, I have talked about uh, a lot of it. And so I'm coming to the end. And um, that's our project, democracy, and we work with ten other pro Approach or other, uh, other. Thank you, Christian. Uh, could you stop the screen sharing? Yes. So we have several. Uh, we have at least one question here on the chat uh, from Mirza. I think she, he would like he or she would like me to ask the question to you. Also, uh, James, uh, feel free to ask any questions to Christian and any other uh, uh, participants, yeah? So the question is uh, from Mirza, Christian. Uh, so basically, King Gower used for faster transactions without stocks. You can't hoard, so you basically exchange within 90 days. Or better say, you have 90 days from start of the deal to finish it and transfer the money. For bigger companies, the 5% exchange rate is no big deal, but what about smaller ones? Mm -hmm. So Christian, you can answer. Yeah. Yes. Um, of, um, the, the negative interest rate is uh, applied after ninety days, but uh, then it's only it's only um, zero point zero one five percent per day. So it's a very small amount. For example, when you have uh, about 100 Kimgauer, then you have to pay one cent per day. And uh, you, can, you can prevent this by spending the Kimgauer to another Kimgauer company. And when the next 
Kimgauer company um, gets uh, also have 90 days to spend. So it's uh, it's very easy to uh, to spend the money again, and we, we work together with business. And they said, okay, of times, then it. It's okay for us because um, then we, we uh, the turnover, and 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 it go. It could it could be forever. So you always have ninety days plus ninety days. Because the small companies can spend the Kimgawa again, because they don't suppliers and uh, or insurance or electricity or or many many things in our network. We have about about five hundred businesses. Uh, and it's also uh, possible for small companies to use it. For for private uses, they, they always find ways to spend it again. So, and therefore, the eighty to eighty five percent of businesses who spend all of their Kimgawa are all small businesses, and uh, the exchange back into into euro is mostly made by bigger companies, and they don't have the they don't find they don't find the ways to spend it again or only a part of it and then um, they they change back um, for example 50% of their of the sales and we work on it we would we would uh, we, we try to find uh, more possibilities to spend it again because every kimgo who is spent in, within the network increases uh, the value of the network uh, but it's not always possible and so that's also the reason why we have this open kind of system uh, we, we also have all the system which are which have, you have no possibility to change back into national currency and they are also very important models and but in our region uh, we found that it's uh, better to use this kind of model thank you christian now, Pak James, uh, Pak Zulur Rahmat, uh, he has a long uh, saya statement and question. Dulu. Saya tanya dulu, Christian. Okay, please, please, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Christian. Hi. Hi, Christian. You hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Great. How do you compare Simgawa to the Weir in Switzerland? Mm -hmm. There, they have this limitation of person in the group and some some shops so in their shops that if you use wheel there will be a discount or something like that mm -hmm. do you have something like that in tim gower um when uh, when i understand you they have a discount when you pay with we instead of pay in wheel mm -hmm. so it's so it's cheaper you think yeah, when you pay in wheel yeah instead quite cheaper it be 5% and 10% not big yeah something okay. like that it's very important for them it will be mm -hmm. reviving the local economy I have a problem now in Indonesia, like in my region, in the in around Lake Toba, there is a group of uh, uh, is, uh, are very lagging behind. Mm -hmm. I think the money, almost eighty percent of Indonesia, seventy percent to eighty percent is in Jakarta. Mm -hmm. So I think one solution for that is local local money. Mm -hmm. Really, I have written this article in Indonesian magazine. Infobank, I think in, in 2011, because I've seen 
this has been happen everywhere in in other place like our in the United States and I think it will be also beneficial for the region around Lake Toba. I think like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. how is about that? The yes. weir you compared to Tim Gower. Mm -hmm. So the weir and the Kim Gower, they are um, um, they are two different type of models. Yeah. So the weir has a has a closed system yeah. and uh, and uh, the weir is issued by a bank and they issue yeah. credit to to the businesses and they only can spend it within the network they yeah. can't they can't change it into swiss francs it's not allowed uh, but sometimes uh, they try they try and there's a, something like a black market and and um, but but officially it's not allowed to change it back and they dirt they they can only search for other businesses within the network and in the via uh, network there are about uh, 30000 businesses yeah. and it's much more than in the kimgauer network it 30000 uh, businesses and and in the kimgauer network we have about 500 businesses so in, in in the weir network it's much more easier to find a business where i can spend my weir in the kimgao network we we have the 500 it's also possible but uh, it's it's uh, more difficult and uh, therefore we we offer the possibility to change the, the complementary currency back into national currency but when when we talk about a region like uh, your one in indonesia where uh, all the money goes into the center of the country, um, then I think the, the model of the VIA would be better for this region. I can't, I can't say it uh, now, but uh, you have to research about it and examine it. But when I, when I have, hear, hear it, the problem was, uh, then I would say, uh, I, I would design a, a model based on the VIA, and not based on the Kimgauer model. And uh, though you always have to look very carefully when uh, at the problem, uh, what you have, and then to to start to create the solution. And that's uh, that's the uh, aspect of the complementary currency design um, that you have to think about very hard in the beginning uh, before you start. And um, and. Uh, of course, you have advantages and disadvantages with every model. It's always yeah. the Wea has the disadvantage. Uh, they have also very many companies, and they would be very grateful if they would have the possibility to officially change international currency. And um, so it's always a very big question how to. Uh, control the system, how to manage it, and and how to find the rules together. And um, and in the Kimgao, we we have a a, a different situation because uh, their their the money flows are quite balanced. Their their money fl money which goes outside the region is about the same which goes inside the region. So it's not the main problem for us to to bind the money into the region. Uh, our main problem is to, to, um, yeah, to have all the regional structures um, strengthened or uh, that, that, that we don't lose these regional structures which we have and we have very strong regional structures. And, and though we, we decided for a more, more open system, but we can discuss endlessly about it. Thank you, Christian, yes. So, Prof. James, or Dr. James, uh, James, perhaps you can answer Fazlur Rahmat's question. Okay, okay. If the current situation of the pandemic could be likened to a state of war, then is printing much money and local currency will be just, can be justified? Could printing much money and local currency could be justified? If the monetary base is expanded without progressive tax on wealth, uh, as we can see in the ob omnibus law, won't we experience the same fate as Weimar Republic? Yeah, okay. Uh, so perhaps you can... Yeah, I have it. Yeah. Okay, 
So as I have written in my presentation, that uh, printing money is always related to the volume of trade. So if the government now would like to compensate for the loss uh, the revenue or something like that, there should be a, a resource. How is really the, the, the volume of the, 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 the trade? It should be based on that. Not if money is printed, but no possibility, there is a prospect of an exchange. There is a product that be uh, created. It will be inflationary. So the problem of Weimar is, of course, is, is related to war. They have to pay their, their, their debt of war. So it's very different. I think it, we don't face such a situation here. So now related to about taxation. Of course, this should be, now, now yeah, I cannot uh, present, present, have a presentation here about that inequality always followed by the reduction of economic growth. See, for example, the rich will be importing uh, goods from outside and no more people inside buy what he should buy. So it will be reducing uh, the, the, the volume of uh, local uh, productivity, uh, domestic, domestic uh, productivity. So it is uh, not good. So that's why taxing the rich with a, a system. So that's why, for example, I have criticized our system. If you see, for example, the form 1770, you will see there a list of uh, activities, uh, the list of uh, uh, product that will be, uh, that will go, the final tax is very low. So for example, the tax for real estate, two and a half percent final. How could you justify that? People who are who are doing real estate, who are doing in the real estate uh, activity, has been a rich people. Why there should be a, a dispensation for that? Now I had criticized this. I have I have sent my Twitter, my uh, what is it, Facebook to the Minister of Finance. Yeah, I have sent them, and the 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 the, the vice uh, Minister of Finance is ex my student and as i have sent him also he didn't answer just say uh, i can uh, answer that in here okay something like that so i don't know there's another about uh, about the uh, what is it about the law and um, um, uh, omnibus law and given my uh, opinion really because i was invited to the discussion in the University of Atmajaya. Seeing that there should be a problem of, uh, we have been very, I think you have been very, uh, we follow the American style. So the American style, there has been many research on that, that the, 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 the Ameri American style is not really good because like level of ways, for example, the so efficient ways, something like that. It should be, uh, yeah, I have written also uh, an article. I think it is in 12, uh, yeah, 2012, when I have a presentation in the military, uh, what is it, uh, from the, in Senen. I presented there are about the, 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 the level of uh, ways in Indonesia, and that should be an improvement in it. And once I have also talked about that with Sugang Sariadi Syndicate in the uh, TVRI about this, because we are at the time in there. So I think we should have a, go, a better uh, system. And this is, you have a better system, you have also a better economic growth, just something like that. Thank you very much, uh, uh, James. And now yeah. it's my turn to yeah. uh, okay. share my presentation here. Yeah? So, pick uh, one, Raya Siregar has a question there. I think uh, uh, James and Christian, you can answer over chat. And later, uh, I can answer it also if it's relevant to me. So this is my presentation, yeah? So I'm going to be very practical here. 
uh, Pak James and uh, Christian has presented uh, the theoretical aspects of it, also the practical aspects. So I'm fine with, as I said to Pak James, uh, whether uh, complementary currency, modern monetary theory, or uh, sovereign money or positive money yeah, become the dominant paradigm because I think all of them are alternatives, good alternatives to the current system. But here in this presentation, I will show that actually you can use all of them depending on the situation. Yeah. So uh, this presentation uh, is titled uh, Global and National Economic Recovery. Yeah? And these are uh, some uh, works or articles or translations that I have been doing. I'm going to do fast. This is some of Ed pieces here. Yeah? Me and a friend, Pak Soi Bolansor Siregar. He has also presented this uh, with the governor and the head of the business association in North Sumatra. Yeah? Ah, hari so, Sabtu, hari Sabtu, sir, 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 hari Sabtu. Uh, schedule with Mr. Gubernur. Yeah, so, Sabtu. Sabtu so, morning. Thank you, Pak Sohibul. He said that we have a schedule on Saturday morning with the governor. So, uh, here, uh, I'm going to uh, go through this. This is actually, the green option is modern monetary theory and uh, 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 sovereign money maybe also, but not really because uh, Pak James has a very specific idea. Yeah, uh, He's actually... Uh, very critical of banks while uh, uh, from my perspective I'm not that much yeah and so let me continue yeah so it, here it is said that the North Sumatra province so as I said I'm going to go into practical details yeah uh, so here it is said that the North Sumatra province requires uh, five trillion rupiah Five trillion rupiah. I think it's about five hundred million dollars or fifty million dollars, and you can see that 0.1 and 0.9 trillion. And at the moment, we only have 1.5 trillion rupiah. Yeah. So we need another 3.5 trillion rupiah. Okay. And where can we get this money? Uh, what the mainstream? Uh, Actually, uh, uh, there is uh, reluctance, but at the same time, there is a push also from the mainstream, which is the our Minister of Finance, Busri Mulyani, our uh, or not our Indonesian Minister of Finance, Indonesian Central Bank Governor, whether uh, what paradigm or what understanding to adopt to deal with this pandemic. So uh, we can pull, yeah. We can see that from 1st of April until 17 June, yeah, the amount of uh, stimulus has increased very rapidly from 405 uh, trillion rupiah to 695 at the end. Even within the space of like two weeks from 4th June to 17 June. Yeah? This is to, for economic recovery as well as health uh, 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 recovery, yeah? if I may use that term. So uh, uh, we can see here for health, social protection, for sectoral uh, departments, for regional governments, for businesses, for corporations, and for uh, small businesses. So the first solution is actually uh, to ask for a rebudgeting or ask for money through a, a rebudgeting process. So uh, a few days ago, two days ago, we hear from uh, Jakarta, uh, Jakarta and uh, West Java, they, are, they, they ask for money through debt, yeah? debt instrument from uh, PT or company uh, SME, Sarana Multi Infrastructure, SMI. So uh, they requested, I think, perhaps about 14 trillion for Jakarta and four or five trillion rupiah for uh, West Java. So they have been approved by P of, uh, or which is a special purpose vehicle of the uh, Minister of Finance. I have my criticism, I'm sure Pak James also has his criticism, but I'm talking about what's happening, yeah? So again, I think uh, a lot of Indonesian regions, their budget has been cut or they, didn't, they did not receive much income from local tax. So they need to ask for a rebudgeting, yeah? They need to ask uh, for more budget. 
to be allocated more uh, money from the central government. So that's the first option. And this is possible because uh, the uh, uh, central government actually uh, here, uh, the money that they are allocating to the regional governments are actually through a very unique, uh, uh, and Indonesia is the first post-colonial country, first uh, developing country which implements this. There is uh, the uh, Minister of Finance sells bond debt to the Bank of Indonesia, to the central bank, at effectively 0% uh, uh, interest. So that is passed from the central government to the regional government. Yeah. So uh, I have here a regional bond, yeah? but actually uh, what is happening now is not regional bond, but uh, a debt uh, asked or a debt, a debt uh, allocated or a debt uh, uh, given by the special purpose vehicle of the Ministry of Finance. Okay, so the method is uh, the central bank buys the central government bonds and the uh, regional government uh, has a debt to the Minister of Finance a special purpose vehicle company, which is part of the central government. Yeah, so that's how we can get for North Sumatra at least another 3.5 trillion, okay? And uh, the debt given to uh, Jakarta and uh, West Java, also effectively zero interest rate, and 10 years tenure, yeah? up to 10 years tenure, so it's a long time. So this is the uh, complementary currency solution. So it is actually uh, stratified, yeah, hierarchy. So if you cannot ask for money from the central government, then you issue regional bonds, uh, regional governments can issue regional bonds uh, to be bought by the central uh, bank, yeah? Just like central government issue national bond to be bought by central government, central bank, sorry. So regional government can issue bond to be bought by central bank. So failing those two, if the central government doesn't want to help, but they have uh, helped, they have been willing to help, although through debt instruments, yeah? So you could ask from the central bank and so this, this is also the complaint from pa James, yeah, also uh, from me, yeah. Central bank uh, uh, is not as independent as uh, it is actually because the central governor is politically appointed and there are lots of uh, politics even though the law said that the central bank is uh, independent. And uh, Pak James is in favor of returning all the money creation from uh, local or from banks to the uh, government. I'm not sure whether it's central bank or to the government itself, to the Minister of Finance. Uh, so this is the idea for complementary currencies from Bernard Lither and Stephen de Millionaire, who we asked uh, previously, but he has other commitments, yeah? So uh, he says that uh, national currencies, global cur national currencies, sorry, are like young currencies. So the principle of scarcity, competition, uh, and all that, yeah. And local currency, complementary currency, par parallel currency, are like uh, yin currencies. So this has been explained very uh, deeply, very deeply also by Christian. And so I'm not going to go through it. So I think uh, they have a uh, this uh, solution, yeah. It's called uh, uh, forgot what's the name, uh, or something, I think. So it's an award-winning solution that. Close. Can be high close, yeah. I'm not sure uh, because I just learned about it, so I'm just saying that they have this ready-made solution to apply the claim to from neighborhood school uh, scale up to regional scale. So uh, to recover uh, the economy, and also in order for the economy to be re in resurgence, you have to implement a job guarantee policy. So job guarantee policy uh, means that uh, every uh, citizen, every uh, co person in the community who wants a job, they should be given a job. If they cannot find a job in the market, if they cannot find, find a job, if they apply to companies, then they can come to the government and can say, hey, give me jobs. So for example, Indonesia has 300 million almost population. Yeah? If 10, 20, 30 million cannot find jobs, uh, then they can, it is the task of the government to give them jobs 
uh, to give them salary uh, uh, to uh, to fulfill also the mandate of the Indonesian Constitution, Article 27, Clause 2. Yeah, every citizen has the right to a good job and a dignified uh, uh, livelihood. Yeah. So, if people ask, how do we find the money to pay all these uh, people? How can the government find the money to pay for all these jobs uh, for, uh, given to the citizens? So that's where the MMT solution comes because MMT says that barring several uh, constraints, you can actually uh, create as much money uh, as you want, uh, uh, especially to give people jobs. So the constraints are real resources. If you have uh, human beings, if you have the tools, if you have the natural resources, if you have the equipment, uh, money is no object. You can always uh, create the money to fund all these uh, productive activities. As Pak James also said, uh, you know, you must have things when you create the money. You cannot just create the money uh, uh, willy-nilly. Okay? And, and this is uh, some, some experts, international experts that we have contacted. So we can add uh, Christian here and we can add uh, Pak pa, pa James also. Yeah? So that's uh, Pak Sohibul, yeah? that's Afril, my wife uh, beside me, and me too. So we are from this organization called uh, Embassies. I think uh, that's all from me. Uh, so uh, I will leave it. We can discuss. Uh, you can ask me, I can ask you, and others also can ask yeah, uh, about uh, how to recover, how to make our economy in resurgence. Uh, from the perspectives of uh, MMT, uh, complementary currency, and uh, sovereign or positive money. Thank you very much. So Christian or James, do you have any question for me? Or any, any other participant? Perhaps, uh, Others can unmute and also ask questions. Uh, dialogue, yeah. So feel free. Yes. No, I, I can I can ask you directly with uh, between the full money approach or sovereign money and modern money theory, um, because uh, when you when you look at the roots with the chart, chartalist theory. Um, why don't you say, okay, the state issues the money and, and then we can spend it for all the good purposes. Why, why do we need a uh, debt money by the banks? Um, and uh, why you tolerate in the modern money theory, you tolerate the, the private uh, issuing banking and, um, and uh, why don't go to a consequent reform of money? Thank you very much, Christians. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, what you ask is uh, very, very excellent and has been answered many times by the pioneers and proponents of uh, MMT. I will just give a summary here. Yeah? Uh, MMT allows private banks because uh, they think uh, that uh, pri uh, private banks uh, with proper regulation can fulfill its function. Mm. So Warren Mosler, the founder of MMT, has actually uh, wrote a very detailed proposal of what these regulations are supposed to be. And I think a lot of them, in fact, maybe all of them, fulfills what uh, James requests from, uh, from his perspective. Yeah? So you, you shouldn't allow the banks to speculate and uh, you shouldn't have high uh, interest rate, uh, you shouldn't have our senior age, you know, uh, you should only focus on productive activities, you shouldn't allow shadow banking and, and mm -hmm. all that. I can share with you the mm -hmm. uh, most less writing on that. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they think banks have their purpose and within uh, strict, in fact, Randall Ray, another uh, MMT pioneer, he said that, you know, you should jail all these previous bankers here, yeah, because they have uh, uh, wreaked havoc into the economy. So unless you jail them, uh, you, you, unless you punish them uh, proportionally, you would not have any effect. Okay. Uh, but they do not go to all. They, they do not go to the extent of abolishing uh, private bank. And also about that, yeah. Also, this is a very interesting uh, point, yeah. 
there are two uh, uh, sort of MNT policies. So I so told you one, which is uh, job guarantee. The other one is effectively zero uh, permanent zero interest rate policy. So they advocate for the state to create money at a zero interest. So that's effectively zero debt. Yeah, and you have although this is not necessary under MMT, but uh, it's also favored by a lot of uh, MMT people. So it says that the central bank can create money to fund government's program without debt. So it's, it's overt monetary financing. So for quantitative easing, what happened is you expand the central bank balance sheet, you know, debt and asset, as well as the financial institutions, big bank, governments, uh, 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 non, uh, any any financial any institutions that the that get the money, but for uh, overt monetary financing, only the central bank balance sheet is expanded. Uh, so they may have on the debt side more th than the uh, asset side, but it's okay because MMT the most crucial MMT point is uh, the government, the state is the creator of money, so they cannot run out of it as long as no no they cannot run out of it. Yeah. The only constraint is uh, real resources. And then how do you know when you reach the uh, constraint? When you have inflation. So when uh, the demand outstrips supply, or when supply is less than the demand, so you have inflation, your real resources are not in sync with each other, the financial resources. So you have uh, inflation or even uh, deflation. So that's the constraint of uh, MMT. I'm sure Pak James has lots of questions. I hope I have answered your question. If not, I can I can uh, answer more. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll talk a little about this debt. Yeah. This is uh, the problem of the economy now. So, for example, if we see, for example, in the United States, uh, there is trillion of uh, ten trillion of dollar debt. Really, it is based on the money printing of the private bank. You know, really, first be, before 1666, money was created by the sovereign power. But after 1666, it has been changed that the government borrowed from the private bank and then it has been the origin of debt by the government. So this is really, as again, if I go back to the pre economic principle from Maurice Allais, any income without any contribution in production and service to the economy is a rent economy. So it is not good for me. So that's why, that's why that the previous so the, the old system of the, the government print money is very appropriate to that. So I think, uh, I don't know whether they have, have read the books of uh, Maurice Ali. It's the, like this. It's the books of Maurice Ali. This is uh, one of the, the 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 there lies the problem so this is so you, you see for example from Everybody has to work to food. So something like so this is from the belong to the state. It will be better for the society as a whole. Less will be about the inequality of income, inequality of wealth, and it will be more prosperous uh, to, to the left. Of course, I um, Plus, no, 
income return to that. So that's why I think if the bank is under the sector, starting the economy because there are a lot of things there without forcibly producing nothing. Because what is if you say for example just to take the the uh, recommended money is the money that has been a digital bank. So that's, I think this we have to think it over. Uh, is unjust and also not productive. So I my uh, objection to the sector thing uh, and printing on that. So my, my, my okay. yeah. I can agree on your efforts in all the wooden be Floors, wooden floors, or we have here uh, some clothing uh, company. Um, so many different types. We had so, here. Yes. Government or is a. So you have mm. federal province. There were all. Uh, forbidden okay. by the government, and there there's still a law which uh, which is um, um, yeah which is for uh, which says you you are not allowed to issue a currency which replaces the official currency. And, uh, of course, lawyer. All have different views about it, and um, then we also had some lawyers and some uh, legal um, theorists, and and some said, okay, um, it should out, and then we start. We we didn't ask anybody. Have you advised any uh, region or any? people outside of the local currency but i would like to ask uh, for a lot to say yes Yes, you are not uh, afraid of that. You are not afraid of that. No, now we exist more than 17 years, and we have many talks with central bankers, and and it was very interesting because uh, there is a study in Germany about local currencies in the Kinga, and uh, it was written by an economist, and he say he says, oh, we don't have to be afraid of the local currencies, so we tolerate them. Ah. And um, it's not an official legal view, it's only an, a view of one economist, but it was uh, very, um, yeah, uh, for, for uh, it was, there was one case at the courts and, and they said, um, okay, when the, when the economist of the European Central Bank says it's, uh, it's okay, or it's, uh, we, then we don't, uh, don't have any prosecution about it. And it's interesting with Wurgel, it's only um, 40 kilometers from my home oh, yeah? town, yeah. from Rosenheim, yeah. yes. And we ah. also, we, we work together, we work together yeah. because um, there's a museum there and then there's um, also some small initiatives. Uh -huh. And, and we, we, we work quite closely together. 
Yes. And and of course it's a it's a it's a role model because uh, the local authority issued the currency, so it's mm -hmm. like a sovereign money or modern money. You can yes. choose. Yeah. They yeah. <laughs> because you you also had the banks beside so so he, they issued the money they uh, they paid the employees or, or the unemployed people and they built bridges and streets and kindergartens and uh, and 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 then um, the unemployment decreased in in the in the town and then the government came and said oh you are a local authority you you are not allowed to compete with the central bank uh, as a state authority yeah it could be that it would be different when it uh, would be a, a local association or something like that but it was a local authority it was it was part of the state and though they they, they uh, prevented that the experiment goes on it was only one year and uh, today it's quite famous or uh, some know it and uh, i think that is uh, that's that's the right uh, solution for for such regions to to work together with local government and um, that they say okay we issue the currency and and uh, you can pay the taxes or the fees uh, of the local government, not more, not less, and that's the story of the colonial scripts in the U.S. in the in the 18th century. They uh, they issued the currency. Besides, uh, the the United Kingdom was wide, uh, was far away, and the local government said, "Okay, we issue the currency, and and we look for ourselves and strengthen ourselves, and um, and use the potential of our region." So yeah, that's, uh, one, that's... one question, one question. How do you compare the income per capita in your region compared to the, your neighbors? Uh, income okay. per capita. Because you are using yes. Singapore money. Yes. Yes. There, uh, there will be a, a positive impact. So do you have a, 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 an income per capita higher than the region surrounding the Singapore uh, region? When you compare the businesses with who takes the Kimgawa with the businesses who doesn't take it, there you have some difference. But uh, I have said there are only 500 of them and we have about 15,000 businesses in the region. So you, with the Kimgawa, you don't have a regional impact, uh, not on a macroeconomic level. That's too small. In, in okay. Switzerland, in Switzerland, there was a macroeconomic impact um, in the 90s. Uh, but uh, but not with the Kimgauer and, and on that level. And okay. and, and the, but the, the crucial the crucial point is the local government. We don't have the local government in in the system. Thank you. Uh, we have Eva Karina wants to ask a question in Indonesian. I'm not sure whether she wants to ask it by voice or by text. Uh, Eva, could you? Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bang Surya. Uh, saya mohon maaf jika saya memilih untuk menggunakan bahasa Indonesia karena saya khawatir salah mentranslasikannya. Uh, pertanyaan saya mungkin uh, tertuju untuk Pak James juga to Christian. Uh, mungkin karena saya mahasiswa HI, jadi saya juga tidak terlalu memahami uh, bagaimana uh, teori soal moneter ini. Tapi dalam sistem moneter global saat ini kita menghadapi apa ya, ketidakseimbangan dalam sistem moneter di mana ada negara seperti Amerika Serikat misalnya yang dengan confidentnya bertahun-tahun neraca, per, neraca perdagangan dan pembayaran yang defisit dan pembangunannya itu dibiayai oleh investasi dari negara-negara Asia Timur dan uh, Tiongkok misalnya yang menghadapi neraca pembayaran yang surplus. Nah, uh, seringkali ketidakseimbangan sistem moneter global ini direspon dengan yang membuka free trade se seluas-luasnya, membuka arus modal se seluas-luasnya gitu, melepas semua barrier-barrier perdagangan. Uh, Sadarkan di sini uh, lokal itu sama sekali tidak ada gitu. Dan uh, saya sendiri baru mengetahui soal uh, fenomena bahwa ternyata bank komersial ini ternyata bisa mencetak uang. Nah, 
Padahal kan uh, seringkali ketidakseimbangan ini sudah bermasalah, tapi terus 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 menerus dijustifikasi untuk membuka uh, ya membuka perdagangan global gitu, uh, di mana terus menerus uh, terutama untuk negara-negara berkembang misalnya ya perekonomian selalu uh, diperuntukkan untuk me- memenuhi uh, apa permintaan uh, eksternal misalnya. Nah, uh, pertanyaan saya bagaimana uh, mekanisme positif uh, apa pos positif currency dan complementary currency ini bisa menjawab permasalahan soal over capacity karena di satu sisi bagi negara-negara seperti Tiongkok ketidakseimbangan ini juga memberikan mereka benefit gitu karena mereka bisa mensirkulasikan uh, situasi surplus perekonomiannya oh. gitu dan bisa memberikan otoritas bagi negaranya untuk mengatur kebijakan makroekonominya either itu export led atau investment led gitu nah uh, saya ingin uh, mengetahui bagaimana kedua uh, mekanisme yang diusulkan ini bisa menjawab permasalahan ketidakseimbangan atau imbalance dalam sistem moneter global terima kasih bang surya minta Uh, minta tolong untuk bisa ditranslasikan. Terima kasih. Thank you, thank you very much, Karina. So, uh, Pak James, before you answer, I will translate, and you can answer in English. I think Karina understands, and I think she can also speak English well. But she just chooses Indonesian because to avoid any mistakes. Yeah. So, Christian, basically, uh, Karina, Eva, or Karina is asking about the global system uh, and the national system. So, at the moment, we see in the U.S. Uh, They are. This is Christina uh, Eva Karina said. Yeah, they are funded by the uh, Eastern East Asian uh, uh, states. You know, who buy uh, their bonds. Yeah, so investment mm-hmm. from East Asian states. So they are lucky that way. Uh, that their currency is, uh, is in demand uh, in the global system. And also, at the moment we have an imbalance. Okay, yeah, yeah, saya mulai. Uh, yeah. Wait, Christian, perhaps mm-hmm. you can un- understand from James' answer. Yeah, I will also mm-hmm. translate it later. Okay, Pak James, mm-hmm. please go, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so there is uh, about why the, the investment going to the United States. In economics, there has been the issue of uh, Lucas paradox. Because according to the theory, really, because advanced country has been high intensity of capital, there should be a capital flow to developing countries. But in reality, no. This is the, the so-called Lucas paradox. Because the investment going to the United States, why? Because they are, the environment is very good. So, and then uh, about the law, about the productivity of the, 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 the labor force and also about how is the compared to the developing countries it is very lagging behind so that's why there is a tendency from investor going to the united states this is a, contrary to the theory the theory it, this come from a big person like paul asamuelson paul asamuelson from the mit has said that those developing countries with low intensity of capital will give a higher productivity of capital if invested there. In reality, no. People go into the state investment because at the end, their productivity, the internal rate of return will be higher in the United States. So how is about this theory, monetary, uh, uh, facing this problem? If you see, for example, now in the like the problem about that of Indonesia, where I had been involved in that, is because uh, there is a theory also wrong theory. A wrong theory said that uh, if a country I have written it in my presentation, if a country lacking in saving in domestic saving, they have to borrow from the foreign countries where saving is surplus. And then what has happened? Really, there has been another theory. Some Peter, for example, has said, no, you need to f- borrow from abroad. You just create mat- money in the bank and then use it for investment. 
and then after investment you can save later so here saving follow investment in the theory saving precede investment so this is a, a, a theory that has been i think that should be called i am really very uh, surprised why is really happened i don't know because uh, uh, some Peter has published his book in 1911, while the next uh, theory is in 1936. So really, why is not St. Peter has been followed? I'm afraid because the book in our country has been, in economic especially, mostly from the United States and all of the theories from this theory has been in that. Never has been mentioned about St. Peter from uh, German, so uh, German or Switzerland. Yeah? So this is uh, the the new money theory I in Indonesia has been proposing uh, that uh, we don't we don't need to borrow, just create take money from the money creation and then in that case we should review the the bank Indonesia law and also the bank banking law in 1992. Yeah, we have to to review that because we can borrow from local bank we don't need her to uh, just to, uh, to, to borrow from abroad we can create money here and then our export will provide us with the foreign exchange i, I think it's a sufficient subject if you don't borrow for investment i think we still have sufficient money we need in international trade of indonesia if we should have to borrow just borrow the very cheap money and also the very less conditionality is very not stringent it's i think uh, so it is and about the local currency to this what i would like to have i have uh, i think if you have this uh, local currency with a bigger than simgaur region i think we will be having a, a more equitable regional uh, development in indonesia it will not be always concentrated in java or it might be sumatra and even sumatra is not well uh, developed it's not uh, uh, equally developed uh, sumatra so <coughs> this new currency theory will be i think improve the 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 the, 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 the problem from the old the monetary system thank you james christian yeah. i guess i will summarize a fast question with how can complementary currency paradigm contribute to international uh, uh, constraint? You know, uh, uh, is that are you able to understand that uh, question? How can complementary currency deals with all these uh, interaction, international uh, interactions between countries, mm -hmm. between uh, one country to the other, between one mm -hmm. continent to the other? I guess. Mm -hmm. That's the summary of the question, I think. Hmm. I, th I think um, it's similar to other situations. Uh, and uh, we, when, we, when you talk to a, to a practitioner, an, a businessman or businesswoman, uh, of course, they, they have uh, global goods and they have uh, goods f from other regions and they always have to deal with it. And, and uh, the, the name says complementary currencies, so it's um, it's not uh, the main stuff. It's it's complementary to each other. It, it doesn't say it's 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 a minor currency. The so Kimgo doesn't have to be a minor currency, but but it, you have to see it's complementary, uh, like in your Yin Yang perspective, that you have uh, for one purpose the one currency and the other purpose the other, and. Um, but but it's very interesting with uh, the trade theory and um i uh, i have um learned a lot about the trade theory from paul krugman with the with the metropolitans and the the attractiveness of metropolit uh, metropolis um and we have one metropoly um uh, here in the in the region that's munich and and uh, the question the main question is always how how is it possible that that the region evolves to a, to a big attractor uh, of money 
And um, how is it possible that they have a unique situation um, that they attract um, all the goods or all the capacities? And there's, there's always a critical point or critical mass. And it's, uh, there's much, much research about it, how to, to build a region who, which is uh, in a balance with, uh, with our regions or which is more attractive uh, for capital and goods uh, than other regions. And, and uh, I think it's very uh, important to, to, to have a region with limits, limitations, to protect the region, to, to uh, build capacities within the region, to educate, and, and you have to do a lot. It's not only the money. Of course, if you have a good money system, you can provide it, but uh, it's, it's a very long and hard way to have a very attractive uh, region which, uh, which is in balance with the world. And um, I don't have the answers for it, but, but I think uh, the money uh, aspect is one, one aspect of all. Um, and uh, yes, you, I think the strategy only to have export industry or to globalize and, and, uh, and not to look at the conditions in the region is, to, is not enough. And we have to, um, we have to build a broader perspective and a deeper perspective. Um, and then um, perhaps it's, uh, it's possible to, to, to have a region in, uh, like that in Indonesia uh, that you develop it to a, to a successful region. And, and I think that's um, always the challenge and the key question. And the other challenge is, of course, we only have one world and one planet and and uh, we have to build the new attractors in a sustainable way and um, we can't build um, much more coal mines or coal factories and and so on so um, i think when when we build new attractive regions um, we have some sort of challenges but i i, I always say we can make it and and um, yes so one yes. contribution is the money system you have paved the way uh for for the rest of us christian so this is i think our last uh question or comment yeah by uh, sohibul ansor siregar uh hello sohibul are you please you said you want to okay say, say, but this is uh, the last, last comment yeah after this okay, let's close okay, the okay, webinar okay, because okay, okay. i need let, to go to let, the let, toilet let, let, let me okay 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 Okay, let, let me express myself in Indonesia, in Bahasa, ya. Sampai sejauh ini, kita sudah membicarakan banyak hal. Kondisi lokal, nasional, regional, dan internasional. Ada hal-hal yang bisa kita putuskan di sini untuk kepentingan Indonesia. Karena kalau Indonesia terpuruk terus, dunia pun akan ikut menangis. Karena itu, satu hal yang belum kita jawab, Surya dan Pak Jamester, bisakah hasil forum ini kita formulasi dalam bentuk pokok-pokok pikiran kritis dan rekomendasi akademik yang sifatnya independen untuk bisa dibaca oleh semua pembijaksana negara yang tadi dicacimaki oleh Pak Jamester. Ya. Juga ingin memberi pesan kepada kekuatan dunia yang ingin menggenggam seluruh potensi di kantong mereka demi akumulasi kapital. Jadi Surya akan saya minta untuk lebih peran aktif merumuskan gagasan ini, kita buat dokumen, kita tanda tangani bersama supaya ada efeknya. Efeknya itu efek lokal, nasional, regional, dan internasional. Thank you very much. <laughs> Basically, Christian, we said that we should have a written output of this webinar uh, directed towards uh, uh, relevant parties such as governments here, uh, so that we can improve whatever that needs to be improved. We can ask the relevant people 
to uh, listen, to read, to hear, to know more about these paradigms. I think I, I will prepare that. And uh, thank you for Pak Soibu for suggesting that. Satu lagi, bisa saya tambah, saya tambah satu lagi. Nilai strategis, nilai strategis dari dokumen dan pesan moral dokumen itu adalah pertama, bahwa untuk kondisi Indonesia sekarang, sayang sekali saya harus mengatakan, orang yang beriman disuruh tiarap, orang yang pintar juga disuruh tiarap. Maka polisi dari negara minus iman dan minus uh, 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 scientific uh, 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 reference. Karena itu kita sebagai uh, orang yang tidak terlibat pada upaya menggantang kekuasaan harus lebih clear di sini memberi solusi kepada pemerintah. Karena itu sekali lagi saya minta Surya tolong dirumuskan kita tanda tangani bersama untuk menjadi signal bagi pemerintahan nasional kita. Terima kasih. Thank you. So, uh, so I will summary say that people not in power need to unite. Uh, they are not seeking power. They are really seeking the betterment of the system. And really, the pen is mightier than the sword. So we should write and formulate something to offer to the, those people in power. So this is these are last closing words, perhaps from Christian and the last one from Pak James, who has opened our uh, webinar just now. So Christian, your closing words, please. Mm -hmm. So thank you for invitation. And um, I'm always a fan of uh, being concrete and doing something in practice. And uh, so let's think about an institutional experiment in Indonesia uh, to bring to bring something forward for the people and and um, and for that you have uh, my support and uh, I do what I can for it and and uh, if you uh, will write a paper or will uh, do a concept then I can support you in in the in the writings. So wish you a good luck and thank you for your patience. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. But James. Okay. I have a request. I think we need more exchange with our friend from the institution Moneta. of Moneta. I think what I have talked just now is revolutionary. Yeah. This needs support. It needs support. I, I am a, I am aware of that. I am aware of that, uh, and because of that, I need support. And then to show that we are not here like uh, only to revolutionize, to revolutionize. But it has been the global prospect. It has been the uh, global phenomena. So that's why I think this is the institution, the, the moneta. I think I have read all of what is written there, as, as, as just now has been said by Christian. Almost all from my side, I, I agree. I agree. And then we need that, that world, worldwide, we like this movement. So uh, that's why I think we still need more. I don't know how, how do you think about that, Christian? I think we need more interaction with all of your institution. So not, not you, but your only, but we need more contact. We need more interchange of ideas with uh, your friends from your institution. So thank you, Surya, for uh, making this uh, uh, Zoom web, webinar, webinar, yeah, it will be not, not the last, it will be only the first, and then we will have more in the future. Thank you. Uh, Christian, of course, uh, later we will be in touch, yeah? Moneta, mm -hmm. if Moneta hasn't had a branch in Indonesia, I'm not sure how it works, perhaps James can start here, yeah? or Vincent mm -hmm. can start here. Or any mm -hmm. other Eva or Dian or Shirley or Daud or Ernie, yeah. And uh, I will leave you later with the closing words. But James, I would also like to say that we have another network based in the US. It's called Just Money Network. So later I will inform you of that network also. In fact, I know uh, Christian from the circular email of that network. 
So it's also very useful, yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, Harvard people, you know, established universities are in the network to democratize money. So closing yes. words for you, Christian. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. So I, I think that's a good initiative. So have a look at Just Money. And we, um, uh, so my boss is uh, connected to Christine Desan and she is, uh, she is also in the team which are publishing the Just Money platform. And uh, I think uh, we need uh, such a scientific um, um, consolidation of, of knowledge okay. and, and to work t together more on this field. And I think we have the, the online tools to, to have uh, talks okay. and not to fly too much around. Okay. And, yeah. and um, so uh, I think that's one side and, and perhaps you can look in, in your country what, uh, what is possible to organize more, okay. more um, power to to change something yes yes would thank be great thank you very much everyone have a good evening have a good afternoon uh, assalamualaikum salam sejahtera and see you mm. in the next webinar bye so salam alaikum <laughs> bye bye <laughs> how would it say christian Judaism. yeah guten how, guten how, guten yeah auf wiedersehen yeah. yeah, auf wiedersehen in, in, so, in Bavaria, we say Servus. 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 Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, what again?